If you're looking for quick and easy Valentine DIY ideas, you are in the right spot. Today I'm sharing eight fun ideas with y'all that are Valentine inspired. And this video is part of a collaboration with some amazing creators. And there's going to also be a giveaway. So you want to stay tuned for that. The link to the playlist is going to be in the description box below. You're going to need that for the giveaway. So this is my first video of 20, my first DIY video of 2022. My name is Lisa and this is our great house. Tip when shopping at Hobby Lobby, if you didn't know, some products are located in more than one place. Right now, heart and love inspired items are located in seasonal, but they are also located in the his and her section that goes on sale every other week for 50% off. I've got Captain Help, Captain's Help with DIY number one. I'm going to be taking these lace hearts that I found in the his and her section and make a quick garland for my tear tray. And yes, I got them 50% off. Now, I'm not sure if you'd really call this a DIY, is what I'm doing is so super simple. I am just attaching these hearts together on the twine with a dab of hot glue and a small piece of masking tape to ensure that things stay put. I'm going to alternate the pattern with the lace facing out and the lace facing in to give the garland some added interest. And then just repeat the process using nine hearts in total for the garland. And this is how it turned out. And like I said, this was so simple and super easy, but I think it adds a cute little touch to my tiered tray. The nice thing is I can easily store this and use it next year as well. A whole bunch of amazing plaid craft ambassadors and I have joined together to give y'all a fantastic playlist. What's fun about this playlist is that there is a giveaway. Each creator will be sharing a secret word on their video. To enter, all you have to do is comment under each creator's video, the secret word that they shared. And then on January 21st, we'll pick a winner. It's so easy to enter. The playlist is in the description box below, and you're going to be receiving some great plaid products if you win. For DIY number two, I printed out some hearts and I'll put a link to them in the description box below. And I'm just cutting out one of them for this project. I'm taking a scrap piece of cardboard and I'm going to be cutting out a heart the same size as the piece of paper heart that I just cut out. I'm taking a regular paper hole punch to punch a hole in the corner of both the cardboard and the paper heart. I'm using Dollar Tree Spackle. And what I'm trying to do is make this heart look more like a piece of clay than a piece of cardboard. And I'm just kind of mashing that spackle into the crevices of the cardboard. And then I go all the way around the heart, front and back, trying to cover it as much as possible. Sometimes this spackle is not as easy to work with, or at least this kind, because it's a bit crumbly. And I did make sure that the hole was still there and I set it aside to dry. And after it was completely dry, I sanded any rough edges and that added a bit of Mod Podge to the heart. And then I used my silicone brush and you can sometimes find these at Dollar Tree, but I've got mine on Amazon and I smoothed out the Mod Podge. I, laid down, I then laid down the paper heart on top and made sure that the holes in the cardboard heart and the paper heart were aligned and added some Mod Podge around the outside to seal the edges. And I wanted to add some beads to this heart garland and I found, or this heart thing, and I found the easiest way to paint them is on a bamboo skewer. Usually I um, just spray paint these, but today I decided to paint them. And once I painted them, I set them aside to dry. And I wanted the knot on the heart to look clean, I don't know. And so what I did was just strung these together with an extra piece of twine using a slip knot. And then I strung on the beads and used some additional twine to make a tassel at the end. And of course cleaned up the ends of the tassel. And this is how it turned out. I think this is a really cute piece and you can easily tuck it into a spot on your tear tray. DIY number three is supposed to be sea glass, or at least my attempt at making or mimicking depression glass. But let's start off by saying what I did right with DIY number three. I used a clean glass vase bowl thing from Dollar Tree, check. I used Moth Podge, check. I used gel food coloring, also check. But what I forgot to add was water. And was this a key ingredient? I'm not sure. I'm going to let y'all decide. 
after you mix all the ingredients together, you pour it into your glass container of choice and kind of swirl it around so the entire inside is coated and it should look kind of like this. And you should let it stand so that the excess Mod Podge mixture will drain and allow it time to dry about 24 hours. And then put it in the oven at 200 to 225 degrees. And I put mine on parchment paper just in case any additional drained out. And then you can bake it for about an hour to an hour and a half. As you can see, the glass is crackling. We're looking kind of like it's crackling or bubbly or something. Not intentional. I didn't mean to um, for it to turn out that way, but um, not necessarily mad at it. I just that wasn't what I was hoping for. So it still has about I don't know 40 minutes or so in the oven for it to be in one hour, and I guess we'll kind of see how it looks after that. Glass items have been in the oven for an hour. They were at 225, I lowered it to 200, and I'm gonna say they're done. After they finished bake drying, there was a bit of excess glue around the edges, and so I'm just trying to clean it up a bit. Once you do this technique, you cannot use these to eat or drink out of. In fact, I'm not even sure if you can put water in them at this point. I, I don't know what they would do to it. But this is how it turned out, and although it didn't turn out I didn't intend for it to look crackled. I actually like this look. And I wonder if I'm, am I forgetting to add water affected the outcome? So let me know your thoughts. If you know, tell me in the comments below. DIY number four is another easy DIY. On my tear track, I like to have some background pieces. And this is one way that I create them. I'm taking this small bamboo cutting board from Dollar Tree and some pattern tissue paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I feel like the bamboo was showing through, so I used some vintage white folk art paint and painted a quick coat. And now that the paint has dried, I'm just measuring this tissue paper and cutting it down a little bit. And now I'm gonna apply some Mod Podge. And here's a tip for y'all though. When applying Mod Podge, less is more. If you apply too much Mod Podge, meaning it's like too thick, the paper you are Mod Podging can kind of bubble up or just not lay as flat and as smooth as you would like it to when it dries. And it can also tear, so just be careful. To smooth the edges after the Mod Podge has dried, I use my finger sander to sand it down. And it gives it a really nice clean edge. There's not much to ooh and ah over on this project, but I like the fact that I can pair it with things on my tray to add interest in the background. My friend Sarah from GGB DIY and I have a cool Facebook crafting group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. Everyone is invited to join and if you do, don't forget we'd love it if you would post a pic of your latest DIY project. The link is going to be in the description box below. The house is going to be what I'm working on for DIY number five. It's a green color, so I'm taking this folk art paint and giving it two coats of paint. And when it was done, I noticed you could kind of see the outline of the design that was previously on the house. And I don't know if it's coming through on camera or not, but I could definitely see it and I could also feel it. So I flipped the house over and removed the stickers and I painted the back. I had tried to sand down the front to salvage it, but that wasn't going to work. So I found a free printable online and decided to add that. And I used Mod Podge again to adhere it down and then added some more Mod Podge on top to seal it. Now this piece is double sided. And I'm using some folk art paint in the color maroon. And I'm going to paint the edges of the house, the sides of the house. I cut out a decal using my Cricut and I'm trying to position it on the side it goes on. I mean, give me some points, y'all. I pulled out the ruler for this. I never do that. I originally painted this heart pink color, this pink color for the heart. And I decided to go in with the folk art maroon color as I wanted more contrast. And I hot glued the heart on the front. And that was it. I really love how this one turned out and I really love that it just double sided. This side is what I consider the back and this side is the front. Depending on where you have your tear tray, if you can see it from all sides, this decor piece will look pretty all around and it goes really well with the other pieces I made. 
What I love about DIY number six is that again, another super easy DIY. I love putting this kind of decor on my tear tray. And I'm using some Dollar Tree calendars and a cube also from Dollar Tree. This cube is actually part of a wooden drawer thing and it's just the inside drawer. So you can also use the tower tumbling blocks from Dollar Tree, just glue three of them together and these little calendar preview picks will fit perfectly on them. So I'm gonna give the outside of the cube a coat of this folk art paint in the color Vintage Tea Rose. And I'm using Mod Podge to attach and seal these calendar preview picks to the cube. I mentioned earlier that each of the creators on this playlist will have a secret word and my secret word is Mod Podge. Be sure and leave me a comment below with that secret word so you can be entered to win some fabulous plaid craft prizes. And this is how it turned out. There's a different pick on all four sides and you can rotate it around and give yourself some options on your tiered tray. We're jumping right into DIY number seven. Y'all, I'm taking these tower tumbling blocks and I'm just gluing them together. And then I'm gonna be using some folk art paint in the color vintage white and giving them a really light coat on top. This is so super easy, y'all. Once that's dry, I'm taking these rub-on transfers and I'm taking out the letter L, the letter V, and the letter E. And from the other transfers, I'm taking out one of those roses. And I'm just adding the rub-on transfers onto each set of blocks. And as you can tell, I'm spelling out the word love and I'm gonna be giving it a light coat of Mod Podge to seal it all together. How stinking cute is this? I almost wish I placed the rub-ons horizontally so that it would more look, look more like shiplap, but I'm very pleased with how this one turned out. DIY number eight is coming at you with this little mini palette sign that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm giving it a coat of the Waverly Wax in the color Antique and wiping it off with a damp cloth. I'm trying to speed up the drying process with my heat gun. And I got these sticker hearts from Dollar Tree and I'm just trying to decide which hearts I wanna put on this little piece. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and I would really love it if you would hit that bell for notifications so that YouTube can notify you every time I share something new. So now just back to trying to decide which hearts to put where. I have a little Polaroid picture of Captain that I'm gonna be putting on the sign. And so I end up just doing a line of the smaller hearts on the left side. And y'all, look at me trying to measure. I'm gonna bust out the ruler again. What, you go girl. And then I'm gonna be adding a little clothespin on the right side. So I'm just trying to figure out where everything's gonna fit. And then I'm adding these tower tumbling blocks to the back so that it can stand up on its own. And then I'm adding a little picture of Captain. This one turned out super cute and I couldn't get socks to pose at all, much less pose with Captain. So the only photo I have is of Captain, but it's still pretty cute though. Thank y'all so much for joining me for today's video. I really appreciated the company while I was crafting. And I had so much fun creating these for y'all. I hope these inspired you in some way to create your own. If you create any of these online, please tag me, Our Gray House. Speaking of, if you wanna follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.